the floating number without disturb the quantum state, and then to keep the the, the power to block the the, the, the powers with one photon, and then to split one photon from the two photon powers, the three photon powers, and then let the other one go to, uh, to go to ball, and if the dropper can do can keep this photon. For him, for 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 herself, and then can do the if dropping without disturbing the quantum state. So in that sense, there is a estimation that for the for the private, if you didn't do anything on that, then the PNS attack limited the quantum communication into ten kilometers. So in that sense, if so, what what we need QKD? There there are many actually solutions, and then the very. Uh, uh, the, 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 the optimal one we call about decoy state QKD scheme. It's first invented by Huang in uh, 2003 and then demonstrated by, uh, the security demonstrated by Wang and Lo. The basic idea is like, uh, uh, because the, the if the dropper is, uh, is, uh, uh, is measuring the photon intensity, so the Alice and Bob, they randomly modulated their photon, the, the, the intensity to, to put not only the signal pulse, but also add some uh, decoy state pulse in the, in the, in the, in the China. So in that sense, uh, Alice and Bob can, dis can, can find whether there is some eavesdropper to, to do the eavesdropping. And after this protocol, people can go to 100 kilometers by NIST, uh, Munich University and our, and our group in 2007. And recently, the, the, the distance for this one can go, for the decoy state, can go to four, 421 kilometers by uh, Geneva group. Uh, after that, people think that the photon source, I mean, the main problem in photon source is solved, but uh, then people consider about the single photon detection. This, this is actually more complicated. And then there are many protocols to attack the single photon detector. And then the, the because single photon detector is not perfect, it's a threshold detector. And then uh, there is a, uh, there are many attacks and the, the very famous one called the blinding attack. The, it published in the 2010. The basic idea is like for the, for, for example, for our APD, it's basically working in the giga mode. And when you increase the photon number, the photon input, it, it, it will saturate first, and then it will blind. There is no information from the photo detector. And when you increase the power mode, and then it, it, it will become, it, it will become into the linear mode. So the if dropper can, then the if dropper can just using this uh, character, the if dropper need not to manipulate, change the quantum state. Well, what he can do is uh, he, she measure the state and then just send her state, but using a very high power to using the, to either blind the detector or manipulate the detector. And uh, with this manipulation, the if dropper can uh, get the information, with, can get the information of the K without disturb Alice and Bob. And the one, the, the optimal solution for this one is called a MDI QKD, measurement device independent QKD. It's, uh, provide, uh, it, it's uh, provided by Hui Kuang Lo and also the, the security proof is demonstrated in the same paper in 22, 2012. The basic idea is simple that uh, uh, you can see the figure A is just at least send some uh, single photon source, some weak coherence state to Bob and the if the dropper can block this one, and then to send some strong pulse to Bob and, and manipulate Bob's detector. But for the MDI QKD, the basic idea is Alice and Bob, they didn't receive any photon from the quantum channel. What they, they do is they, they sending photons into some measurement station to project their quantum state into some bell state. And we know the bell state is, an, to, for example, to project their photon state into some anti-correlated state. But we, we know for the, uh, for the quantum state, for the quantum, for the maximally entangled state, you, you can you couldn't tell the the the, the value you couldn't tell the, the bit value for uh, one photon. You can only tell the, the correlation between the two photons. So in, in that sense, for the measurement station, it, it gets some result and it it announces. But for the measurement station, measurement station can only tell the, the probability between the two photons. The correlation prob the correlation prob uh, the correlation between the two photon, but he couldn't tell the, the bit value. But Alice and Bob can, can, can tell that uh, when there is some announcement, they using their, when there is announcement, for example, it's an anti-correlated state, and Alice will know what Bob's state is. So in that sense, they can establish K. And for the measurement station, they couldn't get any, they can, they can only tell the correlations. So in, in that sense, uh, 
So in that sense, uh, e even if dropper control the station, if dropper can get cannot get any useful information. So in that sense, this one is uh, secure against any detection on any attack on detector. And this is the 2012 uh, theoretical paper. And uh, that's uh, our group start on this uh, MDI cooking. The basic, uh, the, 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 the main experimental challenging for the MDI QQD is how could you interference two independent laser remotely? For example, uh, suppose you have 500, suppose two uh, users, they are separated by 500 kilometers away. How could you interference the two, uh, two independent lasers? What, we, what you need to do is actually to make the photon indistinguishable. I mean, in fiber, the special mode is easy. You just go through the single mode fiber, it's fine. So, but for the polarization mode, we know the, the polarization changes in the fiber. So what you can do is uh, you need the polarization feedback. Means like uh, you can, when the photon goes through, go, go the end of the fiber, you just, you're just sampling the polarization and then you, uh, and you are sampling the polarization and uh, now and then, and then uh, you, you make a feedback. You just uh, using electrical control to, to rotate this uh, electrical, uh, electrical pox cell, for example, to uh, rotate your, your polarization back to some, uh, the, your, your preferred polarization and to do the interference. And the, the, the very difficult thing is the spectrum timing because th this is a trade-off. We know that when we are doing the interference experiment in the lab, it's uh, uh, we, we need to we need to make sure that the two laser, uh, the the two laser, they they if we know if the, the 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 pulse is very broad, it's kind of easy to do interference. But when the pulse is broad, the problem is the spectrum will be very uh, when, when the pulse is uh, very broad, the spectrum is very narrow, so it's hard to. Uh, make the, the the spectrum identical, and if the spectrum if the spectrum is very broad, like the five photosecond laser, the spectrum is easy to to do the overlap. But the problem with the jitter is very hard to control. So that sense, um, uh, in that sense, we we choose some uh, uh, with commercial and also in uh, our current. Uh, because we want to make it practical. So you couldn't use some fashion technology. You should be using some on-sale uh, stuff. So uh, we find that uh, uh, there is some, uh, there is a kind of a, a good play, uh, uh, there is uh, for the commercial lasers, if the, the pulse duration is about two nanosecond. And uh, there, uh, for, for, for such a kind of uh, pulse duration, you can, you can adjust the, you can measure the spectrum with the, a commercial optical spectral analyzer, and then you can measure the per several minutes, and then you can using your TEC to adjust the, your just your, your laser dial. You can using TEC adjust the, the, with a precision of about 0 0.1 picometers. So for this one is a kind of commercial and then affordable for the experiment center for the for the lab, and then uh, you 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 also need because the part duration is about two nanoseconds, so you need to control your uh, jitter of the system is about 10 picosecond. This is acceptable for commercial electrical technology. And this is the, the first experiment we, we try. But later on, if you want to move it in the field, then the problem is how could you make sure that, that the, 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 the pulse will change it? Because the, the temperature, because the fiber, the deployed fiber on the ground will, will change the, this, uh, will have some drift because of the, the temperature or tension drift in the real circumstance. So uh, what we do, how, how could you do the, the, the synchronization? So what we do is uh, we using the, the central station, uh, we have some clock and then send, to send some pulse, send some trigger the laser signal with the, the very precise clock to the Edison bulb. And uh, the Edison bulb received the photon pulse, they will trigger their laser and then send, the, send some, uh, trigger their laser and send the state. So that sense you can synchronize the whole system. This is uh, what we do for the interference of the two lasers. And then uh, in uh, 2013, you can see the, 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 the left corner graph. We, uh, we do the first uh, uh, demonstra principal demonstration of the, the MDI QKD. 
it's just like the Alice and Bob, they use in some uh, single photon, uh, they use a weak coherent state, and then you use many uh, amplitude modulator, phase modulator to encode their quantum state, and then go through some uh, 25, uh, 50 kilometers fiber, and then detect, the, detect it in the lab. Later on, we push it to 200 kilometers and then to do the field test in uh, Hefei. Uh, in uh, 2016, we push this uh, distance to 400 kilometers. Uh, this, is, this is interesting because uh, in 100 kilometers, the, the bit rate is about 3 kilo BPS. Why 3 kilo BPS? The kilo BPS is uh, useful because uh, if you want to do the the, tele, the, the if you if you want to encode if you you want if you want to use the one time pad method to encode your your uh, information if it's a voice message the kilobit the one kilo bps is kind of enough so this means in 100 kilometers you can do the uh, tele, you can do the the qkd uh, encoded uh, encoded telephone and the very interesting thing here is like uh, we in uh, 400 kilometers, the, the longest distance we can go in uh, 2016 is about 44 kilometers. In that, in uh, in this one, you can see it's even longer. Uh, it, for this one, is very interesting. Is like uh, if you have uh, because at first people always think that uh, we probably need an ideal single photon source. In uh, so people try a lot on ideal signal for the source for QKD. But the problem is in uh, for MBI QKD, it, it, it actually for this uh, for, 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 for four kilometers, it beat the ideal single for the source. Means like if you have ideal single for the source, you couldn't go for four, four kilometers with our uh, system. So, so the MBI is kind of better in that sense for long distance. So uh, later on, Charles Bennett, he uh, mentioned that uh, MDI QKD plus the DIY light source means like do it, you, you, you do it yourself or you, you trust the source yourself. Then uh, you can provide uh, the information theoretical security. It can be approached properly. Uh, we have a, a real modern physics paper to discuss about all this uh, taking and the solving, uh, all, the, the, all this kind of thing. And uh, if you're interested, you can read this paper. But later on, uh, so you can see for MDI QKD, the, the, if you want to use it practically, 100 kilometers is a kind of uh, a limit. And then the longest distance of 400 kilometers. So how, how long we can go? Can we go to some 400 kilometers? Or can we go to some thousand kilometers? There, there are many ways actually. The first one is uh, you use some classical relay, you trust some relay. This is what we do in uh, Beijing, Shanghai, uh, main trunk line, we get about 2,000 kilometers and then 32 nodes and 31 links. And uh, we, we trust the 32 nodes. So in that sense, you need guarantee the 32 nodes is physically isolated uh, with the outside. So th this is a kind of, uh, uh, th th some companies are interested for this application, they want to use it. So uh, we build up it. This is not, in physics, in physics is not a very uh, material. Uh, in physics is, is not a very novel, but uh, in technology is kind of material. You can just directly use it. And now I, what I know is like US, uh, EU and UK, South Korea, they are all building up this, such kind of network to use the quantum gate distribution, to use it in the, the cyber security. And this paper is just re accepted by nature. You, you probably can download it in the uh, archive. It's kind of engineering work. And later on, people find that uh, there is another way to uh, extend this distance. This is actually by uh, uh, first uh, discovered by uh, Toshiba Cambridge group and, uh, in the 2018 Nature paper. It's called the Twin Field QKD. We know for the, 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 the MDI QKD, measurement device independent QKD is like Alice and Bob. Both of them send some single photon source or weak coherent state, and then you do some interference on the in the middle, and then to, when, when you when, when you receive some coincidence, project into some bell state. When you when you receive some coincidence, okay, you know that uh, you you are doing the the MDI QKD. But for the twin field QKD, the basic idea is similar that like Alice and Bob, both of them, they send their uh, quantum state into the middle. But when you measure one and only one click on this two detector, and uh, you know that these two phase are locked, 
and then you can establish the quantum k. It's just like the, the uh, Alexander interfer interference. Alice and Bob just changing their, their face, phi A and phi B, and according to their, their, their face, they can tell each other's face. So in that sense, they can establish the K. And why this one can go, and this protocol is demonstrated can go to long distance. Why? Because for MD equity, this, uh, the photon from Alice and photon from Bob, they go through all the distance. But for the twin field QKD, because we have only one photon click, so it means like uh, you only go, go you, for the photon, it only goes through the half of the distance. So in that sense, the, for the MDI QKD, if you, if you check its K-rate formula, the efficiency for MDI QKD is uh, uh, pro proportional to the, to the channel loss eta, but for the uh, TF QKD, it's uh, proportional to the square root of the eta. So in that sense, it can go to long distance. And uh, for the TFQQD, the good thing is it's also MDFQD because um, you, 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 for Alice and Bob, they didn't mirror any photon from the quantum channel. So it's also measurement device independent. And from this paper, we can see that the QQD in commercial fiber, it can even reach 700 to 800 kilometers if everything is good. So later on, we, we push on this, uh, we, we push this uh, research. The problem is, uh, the very difficult thing is here. For MDFQD, you, Variety QD is already difficult because usually interference of the two independent laser and then to do some hormonal deep, to do some hormonal deep or two photon co uh, coherence. So in that sense, you, you should make the two photon in, when, when, they, when, when, they, when, they, when, when they interfere at the beam splitter, the two photon should locate in its coherent lens. For example, like about uh, uh, nanosecond or some, uh, in our case, about nanosecond. But for this one, for twin field QKD, it must be phase related. So it means like uh, for 500 kilometers, you should phase lock the two laser. And then to make, and when it goes through some 500 kilometers, you should also phase lock the lasers. This is the main difficulty for this one. And if we check the, the laser phase, we, we know that there are two kinds of phase will relate it, will influence this interference. The first one is the, the laser drifting. We know that any laser, uh, when you talk about its line waves, it all, it's, it's always drift during the, it's not stable. So there is some line waves. For example, your laser may be very good when you, if you are doing some cold atom experiment, it can be several megahertz, several kilohertz. Means it's uncertain day is about several kilohertz. And also the fiber lens, it fluctuates. So uh, what you need, if you want to interference two lasers remotely, what you need to do is first you need to lock the frequency of the two remote lasers with the instability about the per second, the, the, the instability should be go to 10 to minus 14. And then the, uh, this, unfortunately there is the, some, uh, when people are, when people want to compare the, the optical clock or compare some uh, atomic clocks, people using some frequency and time dissemination technology, using some ultra, ultra stable cavity frequency comb, but they can't make this one. They, they can't kind of control the, they can't uh, align the two laser, the stability, instability into 10 to, 10 to minus 14 is possible. And also you should overcome the fiber lens fluctuation. You, should, you either measure or do the, the feedback control of the face. Okay, and uh, here is our uh, our first uh, our experiment. Uh, we in uh, the beginning of this year we go to some five hundred. We go to a five hundred kilometers fiber, and here is you can see is uh, you can see the figure. We, we 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 just see the figure from the bottom. The figure B is like we have a laser, and this laser is locked in an ultra stable cavity, and the line width and the, the the stability for this one is about ten, uh, is about subhertz with hundred millihertz, and then for Bob is also locked into another ultra stable cavity, and then for these two lasers they send their photon, goes through some fiber because and uh, they they send their lasers. Uh, they send their laser to each other in, a, in one fiber. And then when Alice's laser go to Bob's set, Bob will using his local laser and the Alice's laser to do a, a heterodyne detection using the, the PD. And the same thing here, also in Alice's side, when he received the Bob's laser, they also do a heterodyne detection. And all this signal, they will do the, the and all this, 
and all these coherent detection results, they will they will minus this result and then to do the feedback on the EOM to align the laser lines, to align the laser, to lock these two lasers. This is a kind of a material technology in uh, time frequency dismission. Uh, here, because we want to do 500 kilometers fiber. So we're using some, uh, because the laser signal, when the laser signal is, uh, is weak, you couldn't do the coherent detection. So we're using some uh, bi-directional uh, EDFA to amplify the signal. So in that sense, you can lock your laser. This is actually, uh, we just learned the technology from this paper, from PDB to uh, MPQ. They do some uh, field 900 kilometers phase lock. And uh, here is our phase lock result. After that, you should consider about the fiber fluctuation, how much the fiber fluctuation will introduce the phase fluctuation. Uh, what we did is like, we using some, uh, uh, here is our, here is the, 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 the time, time span for our one, uh, for our one, uh, one clock. We first send some signal, and later we send some strong pulse. And then uh, for the, this strong pulse is the phase reference. So when the, 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 the strong pulse goes through, when the, the signal and the, the strong pulse are all, all detected by the Charlie's detector. And Charlie's detector is, a, uh, is the superconducting single photon detector. It developed it by our uh, collaborators. The good, good thing for this one is it can either measure a very weak signal like single photon source or some uh, a little bit stronger light like the reference. So the, the Charlie can tell the can measure the phase reference and then tell the phase difference of these two photons. And that they can either to do the feedback or to do the post selection. In our case, we do the post selection because uh, we don't want to increase the, the system complexity. Later on, probably we will do the feedback. Oops. Anyway, because I think I have limited time, I just directly uh there is some noise that we need to be considered is like uh, the when the strong re the strong reference will pro will bring some scattering noise and this scattering noise is actually increased with the distance of the fiber so uh unfortunately for 500 kilometers we can still handle it the signal noise re ratio is still good and here is the way using the protocol from uh, uh Xiangbin Wang's idea the, we use a protocol called the uh, sending no sending TFQKD, and we can get here. Here is our result. We can get some 500, 509 kilometers uh, t, uh, twin field QKD. Here, one thing is very important is you can see this black line. The black line is called the read distance limit or called the PROB bound, which means like uh, without the, the uh, this is not only for QKD, it's for optical communication. It's like without a repeater, how many uh, the for the with the reduced distance, there is a limit for your for your communication for your communication rate. So uh, you can see that for the TFQVD, it can beat the PROB bound well. That's the the experiment. If you're interested, you I would like to suggest you to read this uh, 2020 paper in PIL. And later on, this is just happened very recently. Uh, we 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 did it in uh, uh, we did it we, we we do a field test in uh, Jinan, in Jinan to Qingdao. It's about a five hundred kilometer because uh, all the prior experiments, the twin field QKD we are doing is in uh, in the lab. So eventually, you really want to move it in the in the in the real uh, applications. So what we did is here. Alice is in Jinan, and then uh, uh, Bob is in Qingdao. They send their quantum state into the middle in the in the place called Majan, and then uh, this the whole distance is about 500 160 160 meters, and do the, the the field test. The main difference for the field test and then the, the lab is like we have a crosstalk because uh, in our cable we have many classical communication fiber. They are doing other things. For example, they are transferred the telecom, they, they are transferred the, the, the TV signal or whatever, the communication, and there will be some crosstalk. And you can see here is some crosstalk noise. 
and then the, the spectrum noise. And uh, if you didn't do any uh, filtering, the noise count rate is about 500 or something. But if you are, but here is good thing is our wavelength is about 1550. And uh, fortunately, all this uh, communication is uh, 1540 to 1548 to 1550. So you just using the DWDM, you can reduce the, the, the noise. And also there is some crosstalk from, because we are doing the laser locking, we are doing the, the, the uh, synchronization. This kind of noise, uh, we just using the, the intensity block it, intensity modulator to block it, to uh, uh, just uh, to intensity modulator to, uh, when we are doing the QKD, we just the block the, the uh, we, we just block the, 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 la the laser frequency uh, dissemination uh, to, to, to block this uh, uh, wavelength calibration signal. And also the scattering noise and the, the single photon detectors noise. but with our uh, conversation, we can fix it. This is one thing that you didn't have in the lab, the polarization. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Okay, so I, I saw some signal say that the, the, it's not stable. For the, polar, for the polarization, it uh, variates in the, in, the, in, the, in the deployed fiber. So we do some feedback in this system, and you can see the the blue blue the blue line is the with the, the feedback, and we can fix this problem. And also the the arrival time it changes because the the temperature you can see the the red line is the temperature changes, and then the blue line is the the uh, the blue line is the the photon pulse. Photon pulse actually will will vary together with the fiber. It's a kind of proportional to the, to, to, to the fiber temperature. So we're using some feedback to control that and then to, to fix this drift. And later on, here is our result. We can get some uh, 501, 13 kilometer uh, fiber in the field. We get about 2.56 BPS. And then uh, you can, if you see the 300 kilometers here, the K rate is about uh, uh, 700 or something. So I think in the future, if we increase the clock rate, you can go to some, uh, uh, I, I think you can go to uh, several K. So this means you can do the telecommunication, one-time pad encoded telecommunication. So uh, in that sense, for the 300 kilometers, uh, uh, kind of uh, the diameter 300 kilometers area, you need not any transfer relay. You can just directly use in TFQKD to do experiment. And uh, I have several minutes, so I would like to talk about a very new experiment with uh, free space communication. Because we know if you, uh, I just mentioned that you can either using the classical repeater, you can using the, the uh, twin field QKD, but if you go to long distance, you probably need a quantum repeater or the satellite. Because satellite, the attenuation to the satellite is uh, very tiny. It's actually, if it's, uh, for example, the Mishis satellite, the attenuation is about 20 to 40 dB. So it's just like about 100 kilometer or 200 kilometer fiber. So it's much, so the attenuation is very small. And then uh, we launch the Mishis satellite and do, we do QKD, entanglement distribution and the teleportation. Uh, this is just to show you that the the status. So here is like, uh, because as, as I mentioned, uh, what I'm pushing is MDIQD or TFQD. So the problem is, uh, can we do the MDIQD in uh, free space? The MDIQD, you know, it will be next step for the satellite based on quantum communication. So the, for the MDIQD, the basic principle, as I just mentioned that uh, for MDIQD or TFQD, they, just like in the, in, interference to independent laser. But for fiber is easy because the spatial mode is not a problem. But here in the uh, free space, the spatial mode changes because the turbulence, the turbulence will change the, 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 the wave front, the change the face. And then you, you have the beam wandering and broadening or scintilla scintillation or whatever. And also for the spatial mode, it also will change your spectrum mode, change your arrival time of the polarization. So the, so the solution is, for, first of all, 
for the spatial mode, we use some deformable mirrors to increase the, we use single mode fiber coupling. So this one, single mode fiber coupling is like a filtering. So this one, you can get uh, some uh, very perfect uh, indistinguishability, but, the, but because of the, the, uh, the turbulence, the efficiency is, low, is, is quite low. So what you can do is uh, you use some ad ad adaptive optics. For example, we are using the deformable mirrors to change the, the front, view front and then to, to increase the efficiency. You can increase the frequency by, uh, uh, oops. Okay. And also there, hold on. Yes. And also there is uh, other problem is uh, doing the time synchronization because uh, when, when we are doing the fiber, the time synchronization is like uh, Charlie will send some laser signal to Bob and Alice through the channel, through the, through the fiber channel, and then to trigger Alice and Bob's laser. Because you can using one fiber to, you, you can using one fiber to that, to do that. But for free space, it's very difficult because you, you definitely, uh, so for free space is quite difficult. So the solution is, uh, good thing is Alice and Bob, both of them using some clock, a very precise clock, like the atomic clock or others, a very uh, well fine, uh, uh, like the atomic clock. Uh, they, uh, they, they guarantee that the, their kind of timing will doesn't change in five seconds. And after five seconds, if there is some drift, the superconducting superconducting detector can measure the photon arriving time 10%. We're sampling the, the arriving photon, we're just sampling 10% of, uh, of the signal as to measuring the arriving time. And then we use this arriving time to, to feedback Alice and Bob's clock and then to manipulate, the, to, to compensate their, uh, their kind of a photon, photon shift. And we can fix this problem. Another thing is the, the wavelength, the wavelength uh, calibration. In the fiber, it's very easy. Just uh, uh, after, just uh, during the experiment, per 10 minutes, we just uh, stop the quantum things. We just automatically change some strong laser, send a strong laser in the middle, and then measure it with uh, optical spectrum analyzer. But for, but for free space, because the intensity changes, so the, you, you couldn't, it, you, it actually, it's very hard to get a very uh, fine kind of spectrum measurement. So the solution is uh, for Alice and Bob, both of them, they lock their laser into some, uh, uh, into the, into some uh, molecule absorption uh, spectrum. This is kind of practical. Uh, this is a kind of material method. We just use it here in the MDIQPD. And then uh, we did an experiment in uh, Shanghai. It's about uh, six BPS around 20 kilometers. It, the, the, the K rate is still low, but because it's the first experiment. And I think in the future, we can increase the, 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 the efficiency. And this uh, experiment you can get from archive and also it's just accepted by PIL. Probably you will see it in one or two months. Okay, future. Uh, for the TF QKD, for the fiber QKD, we know that uh, you, you, you need some, uh, if you want to do TFQD, you probably need some uh, time frequency dissemi dissemination technology to lock your, lock your laser wavelengths. This is kind of expensive. But good thing is in China, we have the plan to build up a national network to do national network to, to, uh, to transfer the time and frequency dissemination. So in that sense, we can using, we, we can do the, we can use the same fiber actually, the QKD and the, this one we can use in the same fiber to do, the, to do this experiment. So in that sense, we can save the money and then to uh, combine the, these two technology. And furthermore is like QKD can provide some security to frequency timing dissemination if it's needed. And for the future, uh, if you can do the TFQKD and MDIQKD, we probably not only in the fiber, but also in the satellite, we want to do some MDIQKD in the future and build up the quantum internet. So here is the, I would like to give a conclusion of this talk. In theory, QKD can provide uh, information theoretical security, but in practice, imperfect device should be taken care of for any secure system. And then uh, MDIQKD together with the decoy bb 4 and the DIY source might be a better choice or optimal choice. And uh, more than 500 kilometer fiber TFQKD in deployed fiber is demonstrated. And the 300 kilometers, it can be practical. 
So in that sense, in a kind of uh, 300 meter diameter area, it can be uh, practical. And for the 19 kilometer free space, MD acuity is uh, achieved. So the next step will be considering some satellite based things. So the future is like uh, we coexisting with time frequency dissemination network and satellite ground acuity network. And here I, I will share a, a comic with, by Arch Eckert. It's a QGD, uh, QGD network, probably MDI or TFQGD plus the DIY source by Arch Eckert. Okay, uh, this work is done by uh, my colleague, Teng Yun, Cheng Zhi, Jian Wei, and of course uh, my postdoc and then uh, a student, together with theoretical work from Tsinghua University, Xiangbin Wang Group, Xingfeng Ma Group, and then the superconducting signal detector is from uh, uh, CMAT, the Shanghai Institute of the Macro System and Information Technology, and my funding resource. Uh, one advertisement, if you are interested in the uh, standardization things, uh, we are working on the, the standardization of ITUT focus group on quantum information technology for network. You can search it from your know, website and then you can attend it, this, it's free. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. Uh, now the session is open for questions. If anyone from the audience would like to ask something, anything. Okay, while people are, are thinking for questions. Okay, no, it was a different chat. Um, let me ask you a question as a non-expert. Um, I know nothing about this, you know, the ap actual applications and the actual technology that goes into practical QKD. Um, what do you think is the, is the, if there is one biggest hurdle in actually in deploying these things? What, what that would be? What do you think? Uh, excuse me, uh, could you repeat your question? What's the biggest, the biggest what? hurdle in uh, implementing, uh, you know, large scale quantum cryptography? What that would be if you have to name one? Uh, uh, are you talking about some bottleneck or some main difficulty? Uh, the main sense, difficulty or? in general. I mean, what is still preventing a large scale application of QKD? What do you think? Ah, if okay. Okay, I, but you know what, I, I think uh, due to our work and then other groups work, I think for the, okay, for the fiber QKD, I think uh, for the fiber things, I have tiled that for 300 kilometers uh, or 500 kilometers, maybe in the future, it can be practical, there's no problem. The problem is for fiber, like for the country like China, United States, or the whole Europe, you, you have a bigger area, like about 1,000 kilometers. Then how could you make a 1,000 kilometer fiber QKD? This is you either trust your classical uh, node, or if you don't want to trust the classical node, you probably need some quantum repeater. The problem for quantum repeater is uh, like, uh, you didn't have very good quantum memory, a uh, fault tolerant quantum memory. That is very difficult. That probably will be the problem. Uh, that will be the, 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 the thing you should fix in, uh, if you want to use it for about like a thousand kilometers uh, ground, uh, thousand kilometers uh, fiber quantum communication. And for the free space one, but of course you can see you can use a free space for sure. A free space is like, uh, I think we, 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 we demonstrate that with the satellite, we can do uh, QKD, we can do quantum communication. But the problem is it, it, it's still, it, it, it's now for the mission satellite is good for the night it's good for the for the night communication, and for the next satellite, we 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 want to show people that we can do it in daytime, no problem. Then the problem will be, uh, how about the, the by the weather? Unfortunately, for any optical communication, there is still the problem for the by the weather. So I think for free space, you should consider about the by the weather, may be a problem. But you, we have we have some way to try to fix it, but uh, we are still under test. 
And for the fiber, you probably need quantum memory. Yeah. I see. That's what I'm thinking. The quantum memory is the biggest problem. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you another one. So if mm -hmm. I if I was the CEO of a big company that requires secret communication and I don't trust RSA, right? Mm -hmm. Because quantum computers are getting more powerful, more practical in a sense. And so I might be suspicious to use RSA that could be broken mm -hmm. by Shor's algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, is there any like definite argument in favor of QKD versus other sort of classical cryptography, like post-quantum classical cryptography and so on? Oh, it's a very good question. Yeah, we are always uh, asking this question. Uh, first of all, I think PQC and QKD, they have uh, different values. Uh, for PQC is like, uh, uh, it's, it's cheap. It's a, uh, it's a kind of uh, compatible with the current system. You just change your, your algorithm. And then the problem for PQC, or I shouldn't say problem is like, uh, uh, for PQC is still ki kind of uh, the modern cryptography. This means it's also based on the mathematical assumption, computational assumption. You, you couldn't know whether it's still secure or not because it's based on assumption. And then the QKD is based on the quantum mechanics and the information theory. So this is the, 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 the first difference, right? And second one is like uh, PQC is secure. There, there's no any proof that uh, PQC is secure against the quantum computer. It, it may be secure against the SAR algorithm, but uh, there is no, because you, you couldn't do any, you know, the, the dem demonstration on that. This is just like the SAR algorithm probably doesn't work on that. But for the quantum computer, we don't know. So uh, but for QKD is like, uh, you probably need to consider how to reduce the price, how to make it more com compatible with the classical system. And also PQC is good, it's a public code, it's, it's public key protocol. So it can be used for some digital signature or other, you know, the, the, the other uh, public key good things. But for QKD is a private key protocol. So it's more like, like P QKD is good for some, uh, I mean, for, practic for, for the future uh, practical application, I think QKD is good for some, um, if you want some long-term security and you, you want to devote it more, more resource, you have the fiber network and then you do that. For example, the, the bank and also other big agencies. And for the PQC is probably for personal and the last, and uh, this is probably the, the, the future application, but PQC is a kind of, uh, you, you don't know how, how long it can last, this security. And the, the last comment I want to see is like, uh, actually you can combine PQC and QKD to do something. Uh, actually, we also did some work. For example, you can use PQC to do the authentication for QKD and then QKD to do the long-term encoding things. So, uh, that, that I think they can be integrated to make a hybrid system. Okay, there is one question uh, that, that will be probably the last one because we are uh, over time already. Um, mm. So the question is probably you can also read it in the question and answer box. Can the free space uh, transmit distance transmission distance meet the requirement of satellite communication like next generation Motsu. I don't know what Motsu means. Maybe, but... maybe he mentioned the Mishes. I, I don't know what was the name of our second satellite. Maybe not Mishes. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I guess the, 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 the we, we, we Yan probably want to ask the can the free space transmission distance uh, go to some longer distance? I, I don't know what's the the requirement of a satellite communication. Are you are you, are you mentioning some optical communication? I, I think for the the next satellite, probably we want, we are, we will we'll consider about some uh, uh, geo or meo orbit. So this means the distance can go to some uh, uh, thirty six kilo uh, thirty six k kilometers, something like that. I mean the GEO orbit, yeah. 
Does this answer the question? Probably. Yes, thank you. So it's written oh. a thank you.